in one of the recent videos, I created this outdoor chair and it has this angle to it. And there were some concerns and questions on how to cut this angle without a bandsaw. To recap this, I measured one and a half inch from the edge and then I drew a line across the four x four on the end grain. Then I drew out a second line from the first one to one of the corners. The line I drew out here happened to be 30 degrees. The big challenge here for some is I use a bandsaw to make this cut which raised some questions in the comments for those who do not own a bandsaw. Obviously using a bandsaw made this a one step process and it just requires some patience but it made it a lot easier. That being said, I hate to be that guy to tell you that you can use something else but don't actually show you. So that's what I'm going to do today. I have three different alternatives that should give you some confidence to make this cut. And here's a disclaimer, outside of these examples, no additional wood was wasted. These are my first and only attempt, so let's see how I do. All right, so the first alternative I have here is a table saw. If you are a loyal viewer, I still have the saw stock table saw, but I don't want anyone to feel like I'm using a saw that gave me an advantage, so I'm gonna use a job site saw. The first thing I wanna do here is set the blade to its highest point. Then I'll tilt the blade to 30 degrees and I'll also move the fence as close as I can to the blade. That could be dangerous, so I'll back the fence up, place a piece of wood in between, and use that piece of wood as the fence. I don't need this to move, so I'll clamp that piece of wood in place. For safety, make sure you're doing all of these adjustments with the saw unplugged. This line is irrelevant, but I'll place a line to show how high the blade is. Now I'll turn the saw on and push the wood through. This is as far as I can go with the blade at the highest point. Without touching the blade, I'll flip the wood over and move the fence closer to the blade. I didn't catch it prior, but I was a little off pushing the fence closer to the blade. Well, I was close, but not quite. As you can see, I was a little off here, but it's okay, we can fix this. You can either sand it down or use a wood plane to remove that raised area. Well, that looks pretty good to me. Now, it's a matter of sanding it down and remove all the saw marks. And here's the first option using a table saw. And for this next alternative, I need to draw out a reference line so I can follow it. I place the reference line on the side and also the end grain. So this mystery tool is a reciprocating saw. In my opinion, it's the next best option to the band saw, being that it's a one step process. The biggest challenge here is all the vibration and finding a way to clamp it safely. When I got near the end, I switched from a vertical cut to a horizontal cut to avoid binding the blade. Cutting vertical was a lot easier, the chips fell out of the way, allowing you to see the reference line versus horizontal where it can pile up and block your view. Here it is, a cut with a reciprocating saw and I got the red marks to prove it. All I need to do here is sand this one down and clean up all the saw marks. Let's say you don't have any of those tools, the band saw, the reciprocating saw, the table saw, chances are you may have a circular saw. If this is what it comes down to, I got you. After setting the saw to maximum cut, set the blade to 30 degrees, and then make your reference line. Now I'm going to clamp my subject. I'm gonna take this small piece of wood as a spacer and stick it between another four x four. The second four x four is just a way of expanding the surface for the saw to ride on. These four by four pieces I'm using here aren't even straight, but I'm just checking to make sure they're even with each other. From my reference line, I made another line where I want to place the fence for the saw to ride along. I'll clamp that pretty tight so I don't push it away with the saw. I know all of this looked like so much work, but remember we don't have a band saw, so we have to go through these extra steps. All right, so you know the deal here, just push the saw through. Now I need to flip this over and cut that small section off. For a second, I thought I had it, and then I almost ran into the clamp. So I had to stop and move the clamp out the way. Okay, one more stop. I need to wedge this. If I don't, the minute I cut away, that thing is gonna bind up and something bad is gonna happen. Thank you. 
that looks pretty good to me. All I need to do is sand this down. Aside from the band saw, here are three additional ways to achieve this cut. Circular saw, reciprocating saw, and a table saw. These were all really close, and to the spec, I did a better job with the reciprocating saw, followed by the circular saw, and I did the worst job with the table saw. If I had a second try, I'd do a better job with the table saw. I just happened to bring the fence a little too close to the blade on the second pass. The cut from the circular saw lined up really well. This cut is from the table saw. It also lined up really well. We can ignore this edge with the defect. The cut is good. And this final one is from the reciprocating saw, which it also lines up well to the chair. All right, so there it is. I've shown you three ways to make this cut. So if you wanted to make this chair, it is now possible. By the way, there are free plans over on my website. I'll have a link down in the description or you can visit the website DIYCreators.com.